where do you find God? Almost sounds like a loaded question, doesn't it? I mean, if God was someone you could find, wouldn't everyone be out searching? Well, rather than looking for something elusive, like a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, I reckon it's more about learning to recognise the way God is already present to us in our everyday lives. I'm Lizzie Oakes, and this is Where Do You Find God? My guest today is Dr. Gina Zerlo, who is a Christianity specialist and joins us here on Where Do You Find God? Welcome, Gina. Thank you. Gina, I'd like you to introduce yourself because you've just got so much experience and so much depth of knowledge. Tell us a little about your role. Yeah, so I'm currently a visiting scholar in world Christianity at Harvard Divinity School, and I work on quantitative studies of Christianity and other world religions as editor of the World Christian Database and World Religion Database. So I'm tracking trends in every religion in every country of the world in the past, present, and future. Wow. And uh, how long have you been doing that for? I've been at it for 17 years. It's okay. the only job I've ever had in my adult life, honestly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just fell into it and I loved it and I'm still here doing it. Yeah, well, the big grin on your face, I can tell that you love it. I do. <laughs> it's so good. Gina, the scripture in Acts chapter 17 verse 27 says, God intended that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. So my question for you today, Gina, is where do you find God? I love this scripture because it's actually a world Christianity scripture. Oh, wow. I think. Well, maybe everything that I see is through a world Christianity lens. So that's maybe my bias. But I'll, I'll tell you a little story. So I have research assistants at my center. And every five years, the research assistants are looking at denominational data around the world. So what's the membership statistics for Baptists and Methodists and Anglicans and Lutherans, etc. And one thing that they run into a lot are denominational splits. So churches that are breaking apart over theological issues or um, the color of the carpet or worship styles, right? We kind of maybe all have heard these stories of these church splits. Sure. And, and they come to me really upset and they say, how do you handle looking at this all the time? All you see is this division that's going on around the world. And I say, yes, that is challenging. But the flip side of it is that we have churches that are being created where people really feel at home, where they really feel like they are being heard, that they can worship in a space that makes sense for them and who they are created to be. Mm. And this isn't just, you know, a response to church division, but in general, what it does is, is it creates this diversity. And that's where I see God in the world is the diversity of world Christianity. It is honestly the thing that has kept me Christian, despite all of the nonsense, the drama, the difficulties that we experience in these churches, what is the thing that keeps me coming back to it? It's seeing all these people around the world worshiping in their language, in their culture, in their tradition, in their historical context, in their socioeconomic condition, worshiping, living the way that they feel called to worship and to live. Mm. So for me, just kind of living and experiencing world Christianity keeps me a Christian and is where I see God in the world. I love that. So tell me more about that God that you know and that world Christianity. Yeah, I feel like the more I experience world Christianity, both the more and less that I know God, actually, because, <laughs> because God is being worshipped and scripture is being interpreted in ways that might not make sense to me as a white middle class woman living in the greater Boston area. But that doesn't matter. Because it makes sense and to people in their language and their culture and their tradition. And so there's something I can learn from that. There's something they can learn from me. And to me, there's that beautiful mutuality that exists there. And I don't have to agree theologically with everyone around the world. That's an impossible endeavor. But I can love and respect Ooh, everyone around the world. I love that. If only everybody thought like that. Well, this is the beauty of world Christianity. The more you see it, the more you read about it, the more you experience it. For me, it has just led me to more love and respect. And that's my hope in the work that I do is to lead other people to, to do the same. Yeah. So this God that you, you see and you experience in world Christianity, what's he like, Gina? Mm -hmm. Big, much bigger than I can understand. 
much more loving than I can understand, um, much more compassionate than I can understand, than I can be. And I think that's what leads me to keep worshiping and keep staying in this tradition is to see just how big, just how loving, just how compassionate God is. I feel like in the work that you do, like for so many of us, I'm talking about myself, you know, my view, I mean, as a broadcaster, I do get to speak to lots of different people, but still I feel like here I am living in Auckland, New Zealand, that my view can only be this big. But Mm. you're talking about, the way you're talking about how you encounter different people and the way they worship and their, you know, the different ethnicities and things it makes me think of that scripture that talks about the breadth and the depth mm. of God. Yeah. Is that something that re- would resonate with you? Yeah. I think we are in this time where a lot of people think diversity is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, I, and I think I have empirical evidence for this, <laughs> diversity is actually a strength. Yeah. We are stronger in diversity. It is a greater Christian witness to have all these different interpretations of Scripture and all these different ways of worshiping God. That only attests to the the power of diversity and crossing boundaries. That's a core Christian message is being able to cross boundaries in common witness. So to me, it's not, it's not a weakness to have diversity. It's only a strength to have it. And God obviously did that for a reason, right? I think so. I've, I feel like God had a, a plan. It seems like <laughs> he did a purpose. have a plan. <laughs> yeah. Because I've often thought about the t- Tower of Babel, you know, and they all spoke the same language and then God was like, oh no, you're not going to do that. And we all spoke in different tongues. Like, Surely he did that for us to learn to understand each other in other ways. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. I mean, I don't have an answer to that, obviously, but I I know that the world we live in today is greater and more beautiful because of that diversity. There's so much embedded in language that it's just not transferable. Even if I have something interpreted or something translated into English, I will never get the full meaning of it outside of its local language. And I think there's just something really beautiful about that. That's not discouraging to me. It's just human. Does that seeing God in the world and all the different flavors and colors and the beauty of it, does does it ever make you kind of emotional? Like, does it make you feel like crying? I'm not the most emotive person. I'm a quantitative You're social a quantitative. scientist. <laughs> yep, just interested to but, know. <laughs> but, but uh, no, it is. It is moving, especially when you're in these Christian international Christian spaces. I go to a lot of international Christian meetings yeah. with a lot of different languages spoken, a lot of different ethnicities, a lot of different church traditions represented. And it's always joy. Always. When when two or three are gathered in my name. OK, well, how about thousands gathered in, in God's name, you know, crossing these boundaries, coming together, common witness. To me, there's just always joy there. Mm, that's so wonderful. Dr. Gina Zullo, thank you so much for joining us today on Where Do You Find God? Thank you for having me. If you'd like to listen again, tune into Star each Wednesday morning at 10.30 or listen and subscribe via your favourite podcast app and give us a review so others can find us.